This year we chose India um, to align with national celebrations for the 70th anniversary of India's independence. How could we really connect India with the Isle of Wight? Because it's quite important to make that relevance. Um, and the obvious connection for us was with Queen Victoria, who was resident at Osborne House for the latter part um, of her years, and certainly all the time that she was Empress of India. Even though she never went to India herself, she effectively ran the British Empire from the Isle of Wight. Like, what a connection. As we discovered, her passion for all things Indian really, really changed um, the, the whole, whole kind of flavor, the color and chaos of Osborne House in that she recruited lots and lots of Indian staff to the royal household, scandalously in some cases. Um, she introduced curry um, and, you know, that this was all on the island. Um, and we really felt that wouldn't it be interesting for our school children here to unpack that and to engage with that and get excited about that in order to um, inform what their costume presentation at the Mardi Gras was going to be. We really feel it's important that carnival isn't just about dancing on the street, that there has to be some underpinning research and learning that goes on before you even get to the street. So that's why things like the Heritage Lottery Grant are so important to us, because it allows us to undertake that research program so young people really understand why they're telling that particular story. So that underpinning research is fundamental to how we approach carnival and education work. If, if you're studying India, why might you visit here? Yes. Um, because Queen Victoria was the emperor of India, but she never went there. Excellent. <laughs> yes. So Queen Victoria was um, Empress of India, but you're right, she never actually visited um, India herself. So, <clears throat> this here is a map from 1886. Can anyone tell me what the pink bits mean? Does anyone have an idea as to what the pink countries might be? Yes. Yes, yes, exactly. So, Queen Victoria was Queen of England, and we're here, quite small. Uh, she was Empress of India, as you mentioned, so we've got India here. But all of the other pink bits on the map were countries that were part of the British Empire, countries that she also um, ruled. So she stayed in Britain, but she ruled these other countries as well. Let's do these three. Okay, so, Queen Victoria became Empress of India, and in 1887, she celebrated her golden jubilee. Does anyone know how many years on the throne you have to have to be celebrating a golden jubilee? Any idea? Yeah? Is it like 50 or something? It is exactly 50. Yes, well done. <laughs> 50 years. So she was on the throne for 50 years. She obviously hadn't ruled India for 50 years, but she'd been Queen of England for 50 years. So there was a big celebration. So which of you would like to be organising? Your hand was up first. It's a, it's a big job, organising her jubilee. Excellent. Well done. So India became an independent country and wasn't controlled by the East India Company or by a Governor General or by the Crown. They ruled themselves. So very important role there. And this is why we're where we've are we got this overriding theme of India this year, because 1947 was exactly 70 years ago this year. So that's why we've got the theme of India running through this Mardi Gras. I think as well as the, the historical connection, um, there's also the cultural link 
because part of our program has been about working with Indian artists so that the children have a kind of live experience of what it might have felt like at Osborne House during that time, what the music might have been like, what the food might have been like, how, um, you know, Indian culture has influenced um, our contemporary language. You know, a lot of words actually, you know, came through um, India. So it's not just about history, it's about culture. And, and I think, well, we, we all think that Actually, that's so important, particularly for the Isle of Wight, because we don't have a very large um, Indian community on the island. And we had some negative feedback, like, why? Why are you doing India? You know, why aren't you doing St. George's Day? What's India got to do with us? And of course, the answer is it has a phenomenal amount to do with us. So coming through this project it's not just about costume and performance and the arts it is so much wider you know it's about citizenship it's about it's just about living together working together um, and the kids are taking that on board and they're getting quite enthusiastic about contemporary Britain. I'm going to say to you who I am and I'm going to say hello in the way I would say it in my country, my religion, in my language. Okay, so Mira Nam Gita. So my name is Gita, and you can call me Gita. And I'm going to say Sat Sri Akal to you. And that, can you repeat that for me? Sat Sri Akal. Thank you. Right. Does anybody know why we're here today? Wow. Okay. So why are we here today? Oh, yes, we've had Holy Festival, absolutely. Okay, um, any other reason? Uh, for the Mardi Gras. Thank you. Yes, we are here for the Mardi Gras. Did everybody know that? Yeah, we knew that? Okay. Who's going to the Mardi Gras this year? All of you. Wow. <laughs> so, Miss says all of you, so all hands go up. Okay, fine, that's perfect. All right. Do you know why you'll be going to Osborne House at all? To the Durban Room, because... Victoria had a link with India and she loved India and she wanted to be a queen. Wow, that's amazing. He's done it all for me, right? Okay, I might as well go home. <laughs> okay, absolutely. <clears throat> she had a link with India, so hence why we are here and I'm dressed up in Indian costume. So you're doing the East India Company. Does anybody have any idea what the East India Company was all about? Imports and exports. Yeah, okay, so what? Very good. So what we so you said about spices, very good. Anything else? What, what else do you think was coming from India? Tea. Tea. Thank you. Tea. Brilliant. Tea. Cup of Rosie Lee. Tea. Okay. So that so things like this would be traded in um, um, in the uh, East India Company. You'd have silk. You'd have spices, um, and you'd have tea. Does anybody else know what was so special about Queen Victoria? What was she made? She was given another title. Not the Queen of India, very close, very close. It was the Empress. Empress of India, okay? So she was made the Empress of India. She was made the Empress of India, but she never went to India. She never actually went to India, okay? Um, because, she was, she was, um, because of her age and like the travel, it just wouldn't have been sort of like good for her health. So she actually never went when she was made the Empress of India. Does anybody know what culture means? What's culture? Perfect. Absolutely spot on. It is a way of life. Okay, so it could be anything. Culture could be within a classroom. Two different classrooms could have two different cultures. It could be in your homes. It could be in your countries. It could be in different communities. Everybody has a culture because it's a way of life. So can you somebody just describe, just quickly, the things that you would have in your kitchen? A fridge. A fridge. Um, Toaster. Oven. Oven. Microwave in an Indian kitchen. She would be preparing her food sitting on one of these. Okay, right? So, what is she making? Does anybody know? Roti. She's making roti. Absolutely. Okay, so this is an Indian spinning wheel. Okay, this is an Indian spinning wheel. And what would happen is um, they would spin everything on one of these, and every household has one of these. So, what do you think they'd be spinning on this? 
It's not wool. Silk. Not silk. It is a fabric, but it's not, it's not wool and it's not silk. Very clear. Cotton. Well done. It's cotton. Okay. Now there's another reason. This is a very important um, piece of equipment to India in Indi Indian history. Do we know about Gandhi? What do we know about Gandhi? Okay, go on then. Yeah, he did. So, absolutely. So he does know something about Gandhi. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He did. He was. He was all about peace. Okay. So the reason why I'm bringing Gandhi into this is because this instrument here was actually used um, as part of a protest. Okay. So Gandhi was saying, well, you know what? Look here now, people of India. Okay. We're doing all this work. I want everybody in India, the whole nation of India, to sit down wherever they are, get one of these, which is called a jarka. Get a jarka and I want you to spin it. Nothing has been spun on it, but he was making a protest because he didn't want um, he didn't want anybody to be providing the British with any more cotton or anything. So he's making a stand with this this instrument. Uh, Timothy Eccles, I'm the head teacher at, here at Holy Cross Catholic Primary School. We have uh, a set of values at, at Holy Cross: um, cares, values, confidence, aspiration, resilience, inquiry, and spirituality. So we're always looking for opportunities in which we can give the children an opportunity to kind of show some of these, the confidence or the resilience, and and to challenge themselves. In the time that I've been teaching, uh, it's often those opportunities that are outside of, I suppose, the normal curriculum. Uh, or use those curriculum skills that the children seem to get most out of. Um, Kathy Odie, who was our uh, year six and then year five teacher, um, could see the artistic side of it, and that was her flair, but got the school involved in it. Children to have an opportunity to use the skills that they've been learning, um, and for those children perhaps who weren't as academic as others, um, to exceed and excel and, and, and develop and grow. So it's helped uh, well, numerous children, some with confidence issues, um, dressing up as someone else and taking on a different persona, gives them that opportunity to, to yeah, come alive and, and really enjoy it. We, in the past, did it as a club um, and we had volunteers. Um, we're trying to extend it and expand it a little bit more in kind of running it as a whole school event like we've got today so they all get a, a flavour of it and understand what the, the Mardi Gras is and, and what's involved and hopefully that will encourage others um, in later years to come forward and, and do it more. And we've got more this year than we've had in the previous years so it, it's growing from strength to strength but yes it's, it's been a superb activity to be involved in. Um, so teachers are supportive of it in terms of a theme. Um, and allowing that flexibility to happen during the day. A number of them will come and dress up and take part on the day themselves. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll, like we're doing with the children, grow their confidence as well. And uh, they'll come and, come and spend the day and ride um, parading. Yeah. Some uh, enjoy the dance aspect of it, but actually it's the coming together as a sort of a group um, and taking part for the, for the sheer joy of celebration. The overall theme is India and this one is the Bijan Tiger is it? So before, or the entire school has come together for a little assembly, and we'd get discussed about the theme and everything, and then we'd try and draw a future costume that we're going to use for this year. So me with some friends, we drew like a, so they had a backpack with multiple arms coming out, like the goddess, and like stripes, so like the tiger stripes. So then, overall, they pick out some ones that they like and then those are going to be the costumes. Well, I like creating the costumes because it's quite a big journey and you get to do it with all your friends as well. Yeah, we were cutting out bits of like foam to stick on a mask of a tiger. And then this week we've been painting silk with silk paint to make tiger stripes. Well, over somewhere there's like hoops and there's grass inside of it, right? Because it's the tiger in the grass. Like, what I'm looking forward to is, like, everybody seeing, like, dancing, whatnot, singing in a costume. Like, the costumes in its own, I like, because I've designed them. 
everyone's in the carnival, you're a part of what's gonna happen. Yeah, of what's happening, you're a part of that. There's going yeah. to be like a tiger skirt, yet there, at the end there's going to be like a wire, so it's like a hoop skirt, the tiger prince. His mother loves those. Yes. So we're gonna have wire at the end and it'll be like a hoop skirt. So silky. With... It's so soft, you could have a feel of it. And just it's so think. Soft. It's so good. So needs tiger prints in, and which makes it look very realistic. Very realistic. Yeah, and they yeah. just copying it, it from a tiger. It's all about movement. The more moving parts, the more people yeah. will see you, and the more people you will see Rule you, Rule number one, the better. never keep your feet still. If you keep your feet still in a carnival, it's like... It's ruined. It gets the ruined. You can't, ruined. You can't stay still in a carnival. Carnival is about movement. And we both have our favourite song. So, and then you learn the yeah. dance moves and then you forget them and then you, the song comes on and you just can't yeah. resist dancing. You just have to There's dance. There's freestyle, which is when you've forgotten you just, the moves, you just, just improvise, improvise, just There's dance just and then rule. get the hang moving. of it. We've got like loads of Bollywood dancing. Oh no. <laughs> Bollywood dancing no, for the win. It's really fun. Like the crowds are amazing. Yeah, and, and they want just... you to dance so and they want to feel dancing. the rhythm. There are so many things I'm excited yeah. for. The people, the costumes, there might even be face paint. Because There's treats. definitely going to be it's, face paint. There face will paint. be face paint. I face love paint the face paint. Face paint is 100%. The thing about carnival is fun. Yep, festive. Carnivals are fun, festive. Yeah, the you, movement. You, you never have a down face. Never. If, you never have a down, down face. Even if it's rainy. The weather if can't stop us except from last year. That's, that was the only. <laughs> there was lightning last year. Yeah, there was lightning. That that was the only reason. Even though there was lightning, there was really heavy rain. I was like, oh hey, yeah, they were just dancing, and yeah. I was like, that's carnival spirit. Right, yeah, that is Keep carnival. Dancing. We are really really close. Um, it's just last minute things like getting the backpacks ready quickly, like adding jewels, adding gems, and everything wow. like that, and then. <laughs> and sorting out with the canes and sticks. Um, I think that's it. And yeah, it's really coming along now and I think we're nearly ready. Nearly. Re nearly. Miss Mather always gets the big poofy things. She's wearing the goddess. Goddess. The goddess. With backpack. multiple arms. We have multiple dances like you last year. Some of them I already know, some of them Phoebe already knows. But like magic in the air. Yeah. That one's classic, but some of them are new to us, so Indian ones are the new one. All of it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited with wearing all my co the costume that I get, as it's going to be my choice in it. Well, either, either, and it's going to be really, really fun. Yeah. We're heritage funded, so we, we've chose one of the Imperial, is it Imperial? Yeah. Imperial um, ideas. So we had a heritage day at Osborne House. Which was well, great, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the best thing for them children. Yeah. They got to look around the, the room and find the gifts that were sent to Queen Victoria. It from really that. sort of matched them on, didn't it? To yeah. The whole idea of it, the concept of how the Carnival Company could see it going forward as a Mardi Gras parade. Um, and they came back absolutely buzzing with so many ideas. They, they learned so much from just that one um, visit. Yeah. It was amazing. And the, their ideas that they were coming up with, you know, how things had been sent to Queen Victoria, how they were decorated, the materials that were used. Mm -hmm. The enthusiasm was fantastic. They've been absolutely brilliant the whole way through with it. Mm -hmm. And their ideas just kept coming. And mm -hmm. you could see that when they then started to draw their designs for the costumes, wouldn't yeah, you Yeah, so the whole four classes yeah. made the designs, which then went to the <coughs> carnival company. And we went, not too long after, was it? No, in prototype, weeks, didn't we? Yeah, had a go, seen some ideas and went So it's been there. fantastic to see it from, obviously, that one sort of conceptual visit with them, getting their ideas going and sort of, you know, getting them to think about different aspects of it and how they could then put it into costume and how they could then display it as a piece of history has been absolutely brilliant and they've been fantastic doing it. So hats off to them. Well, personally, from my jazz hands point of view, there's a lot of children this time who've taken part that wouldn't ordinarily do this sort of thing. And to watch them grow in confidence over the 10 weeks, has been fantastic. They, they would be the ones that would sort of hide away. They'd want to do sort of the backroom stuff, the school plays and things. They wouldn't be on the stage. Mm. And you've really sort of seen them blossom. So for those children, it's had a massive impact, not just on their learning, but just on their confidence. And that for children is 
massive. Well, at the start, you think, oh my gosh, you know, the, we're never going to get these costumes done. Oh, we're going to get these children in order. Is everything going to be okay? But we're nearly there. <laughs> I keep checking where I'm like, please don't rain, please don't rain. They wanted to do it in the public. They wanted to go down Union Street. It's that whole, they can finally see it's all come together. Mm. And that, for, for me, and probably for you as well, Charlie, is it's the magical bit. It's, yeah. That's what you do it for, isn't it? Yeah, until that time. Yeah, all the hot glue gun burns, they're worth it. <laughs> Most definitely, yeah. Our theme is the gift of India. And we got the idea from Osborne House. When we went to Osborne House, we saw this massive fish. And we thought, why not use that into one of our costumes? And with a big ruby red eye on the hats, and then all sparkle and glamour everywhere. It was made of gold. Silver, sorry. With an actual ruby eye. We designed the costumes and we made stunts that swirly thing and the scales and the hats, I think. Did we make the hats? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the teacher's done the skirts for us because. Miss Brooker did. Yeah. Um, um, the you're dance. Just, you're just able to fun. just have fun and be free to dance wherever, you, wherever the routine is. In any arts project, we feel that outreach work is important. Uh, one of the barriers to participation is people having to come to a central venue to pay for a, a, a venue. So uh, integral to the project has been our ability to use artists to go out into the community to work with that community to help them create that carnival art. My name's Kerry and uh, I don't know what my involvement is. I just, I help the children in Oakvale make their costumes for the Mardi Gras. Was asked to come in to help. Um, with the Mardi Gras to get the community involved because I do a lot of work with Mark down in Oakvale to get everyone involved in it and Mardi Gras is one of the things we do. They know me anyway because of I run this drop and swap where we're working now. Uh, we're going to carry on doing carnival clubs down here, just a regular thing so the kids can get involved, the families can get involved. The community, you know, getting to know others, they all get along well, they all work well together. I think it's just they enjoy it. Rather than being stuck in the house all the time, they get to come out and do something different. So easy to make these things. It's amazing. I mean, we've done two courses, um, two One carnival courses, and to make stuff with gaffer tape and a bit of material is just like that. Like that? And then on there, like that. Kids just want to be there just to see their faces because if they do, it does make a difference. Well, we're doing people and portraits, and we have to like, we're making costumes for like the like Indian, and we're we have to like dance to some songs like around town. The artist that painted all the people in, in like the Indian time, the like, Victorian time. When the artist like painted them, he mostly used colors like gold and purple and green. I like the hats because like they've got like these like things that dangle down and they just look really nice. Well, I have to cut out 28 strips of each colour and they're for the uh, boy hats. These are the girl hats and we haven't done the boy hats yet because I, I like the tassel bits. So I'm Eric and uh, me and my wife Yetta moved to the island in 2003. Tore a carnival in Ride in the beginning of the summer and within a few months, we were uh, also making costumes. And at the moment, we're here with uh, Josh at the uh, Oakvale Carnival Hello. Club. <laughs> we're making uh, costumes in the, for the theme of India at the moment. I think it's... Uh... And we went to um, Osborne House. Yeah. Do you remember the name of the room we went to? Um... You know, that really fancy room that had all the Indian things in it. No. It was called the Durbar Room. And what did they have in the corridor? Um, frames. Frames of who? India. There was lots of pictures, wasn't there? So the costumes that we're making with them are uh, incorporating that big feature of the Durbar room, which was uh, lots of portraits that uh, Queen Victoria had made. Because she didn't ever go to India. So she... Uh, had uh, some very skilled artists go and um, make portraits <coughs> for her. Like paint. Mini. <coughs> yeah, so that she could see what uh, Indian people were like. <coughs> I quite like the music. Um, 
and I do enjoy the costume making. Um, there's a lot of work that involves hundreds of uh, pieces all the same where you have to cut them out and glue them and stick them on. So there's a lot of production line stuff as well, but it is worth it when you see 50 costumes all the same coming down Union Street. Viva! Yeah, Viva um, stands for Valuing Individuals, Valuing All, and we're a mixed ability group. We come under the umbrella of the new Carnival Company at the moment, um, which has been amazing. Because to be honest, we couldn't, we couldn't be self-supporting. We don't have enough members to sort of pay enough subs to cover things like insurance. So, yeah, and we've had a, a, a good sort of solid group. We have people who sort of join and leave, but we've got a real core of people who have been here since the beginning and who absolutely love it. And um, several members take part in costume making and in drumming. Um, and then we have a sort of a little overlap on either end as well, some that just do costume making and some, some who just do drumming. We do try and kind of mix the group as well. And so we have a lot of social events that involve everybody. Certainly with the drumming, uh, with Viva Drumming, everything we do is very repetitive um, and we create the words with some images so that it's easy for us to rem remember. Um, so everything's very accessible, so we have visuals and we have you know, words that go with everything so that we can remember the rhythms. Um, we have a lot of fun and we often, in the drumming sessions, will just create a little groove at the end, of, you know, and it can be something really random like what we're doing at the weekend or what we're having for our supper tonight, um, so that everybody's input is equally valued and we all have a laugh at each other, with each other. Um, I usually get smacked on the bottom every week with a drumstick by Michael. Um, yeah, and, and we, we do, we have an awful lot of fun. It's, it's a really nurturing group and I think because we've sort of known each other for a long time, it's a very safe environment where people feel comfortable to speak out. Um, our members um, have difficulty expressing themselves, but because we know each other, we can help that without um, making people feel uncomfortable. This year, we have taken part in the Heritage Lottery funded project, um, which has given us a lot of opportunities, actually, that we wouldn't have had normally. So we had a visit to Osborne House, um, and that was brilliant because obviously I'd been to visits with some of the school groups as well, but they were able to tailor make it so that it was accessible for our, um, our adults and the level at which everything was pitched was really so that everyone could join in and understand. Um, and yes, we've also had Geeta from T Hop to come and give us our Indian cultural session and dancing session, which everybody absolutely loves. Everybody loves dancing. So I'm Katie Edmonds and I'm the performing arts tutor at the college, or one of the performing arts tutors. And we were approached by Chris and Frankie, you know, to kind of get involved initially. And as departments across college, we, we decided to collaborate because it's very rare that we get to do stuff together, is it? Yeah. Because the timetable, you know, there's so many demands on that. Um, so I have 17 performing arts students within this project. Yeah, we've got 11 students. So I'm Chloe Glover. I teach in the Pathways department. I teach students with learning difficulties. Um, and 11 students from our programme are involved in the carnival. And we've been working on the back, doing all the background research. Um, our theme initially was Indian temples. Um, so we've done lots of, the students done lots of independent research into the temples and they actually came up with, with our costume design. Um, they planned it and designed it and then they've created it. Painting and decorating students and the art students have created a float, um, which is actually leading the parade. Um, and it was all their own work, the students' work, and they created it, planned it and made it happen. Uh, it's really inspirational for them. Um, we created loads of mood boards before we actually made the costumes and they looked at all the colours of India and they looked at their lifestyle and the culture differences and they've just found it so inspiring and they're all just so excited to just be in the parade and mm. dance and wear the costumes. They're really proud of it actually, yeah. it's really lovely. We've been practising um, some dances with Katie's performing arts students just to keep it really integrated, which is lovely. This project is the first time we've done it collaboratively. I think, yeah. I think different departments have been involved with the carnival in different ways over the years. We've been part of the Mardi Gras for the last five or six years, mm. um, but it's just been more of a 
department entry, so just pathways. And um, this is the first year I'm aware of that we've really collaborated as a whole college, mm. cross departmental effort really. Um, usually I do, I do choreograph numbers for things when we go outside, you know, we have external projects. However, my level two students have completely um, choreographed everything as part of their qualification. So we were able to, um, we were able to put a unit of study to this project. So they had to choreograph for three different performances. Um, so this is something that they have, have done on their own, you know, just with a little bit of guidance, but they have been very independent. So it's fantastic. And that collaboration with external clients is really good because our students are able to look at a performance brief and respond to it. So rather than create something that we perform in the studio and gets assessed, they're able to do something, you know, we look at it as a, a kind of professional client brief. And so, so yeah, there's different units of work and all of them are doing something slightly different towards their qualification, so it's been brilliant. Tomorrow will be their last formal assessment of performance work. They've had, you know, a number that they've just kind of ticked off. So this is as Mardi Gras is intended. It's a huge celebration. Yeah. It's a chance to dance together. It's a chance to yeah. be together and, and have fun in a performance, you yeah. know, and, and it's just perfectly fitting, I think, at this mm. time of year. We've got lots of learners from our department that have never done anything like this before and have usually shied away and um, they've just got their confidence and they're just excited and it's just fantastic that they've got this experience and the chance to work with other students in different departments. I think at the heart of it though, certainly any involvement that we've had with Chris and Frankie as kind of leaders of this type of, well, they, you know, they're renowned for the carnival work they do, but I think that they inspire from, from the, you know, yeah, from they the do. core really. Definitely, yeah. And without that, I don't know that, you know... Yeah, it just wouldn't be the same, yeah, would it? No. I don't know that it would be the same. Yeah, and, and the students are so excited to show Chris and Frankie their work where they've started mm. so far because, they, yeah, they're an inspiration to them as well.